Hello everybody and welcome back to another video of In Studio with Stefan Fillion. Thanks for tuning in. This is part two and as promised this week we'll be doing the second part on drums and we'll be focusing on more of the creative side of drums, percussion, hats, doing things like editing and chopping loops, reversing things, etc. Uh, last week we did the fundamental principles on drum processing, so I'm going to try not to touch too much on that this week. Although, if I'm doing something new like Heights or something, I might just touch on it. Um, thanks very much for all of the positive feedback on the first video. I got a lot of questions and a lot of feedback, and I'm definitely going to be doing a couple of shorter videos, just like one or two minutes, just um, answering some questions and explaining some things in more detail. For example, I'll do a video from a blank profile, showing you how to set up parallel compression from scratch and just a couple of other techniques. Anyway, let's get straight into it. This week I'm going to be using two or three tracks, the first being my release on Southern State Music called Level 9000. And the second one, I'll be using a new track of mine, a free bootleg actually, that you can download from my Facebook page, which is a bootleg I did of Above and Beyond, a thing called Love. And then if we have time, uh, I'd also like to show you a deep tech track that I'm releasing under my house alias, The Bee Prophet. And then that can just give you some insights on how you can use these techniques on other genres. As a lot of people were messaging me, telling me, you know, that, ah, oh, but they work in this door, they do this genre, and obviously, you know, the fundamental principles are the same, you know, regardless of what genre you're doing or what music you produce. Okay, so let's get straight into it. Um, this is the drums for level 9000, and I'm going to show you here, um, unfortunately, I don't have all the synths, so I can't show the full track, but just to give you an idea of what we're working with. <laughs> So you can hear the percussion and you can hear the stereo image in the percussion. Then if I show you what we've been doing over here with hats. Just so the drums. So basically it's the my standard processing on a kick and on claps and snares etc that we covered in the first episode part one so I'm not going to be going into that again just um, something different I think I'm not sure if we use it here but something I didn't show you guys last week is reverse claps so, and what the I'll do a short video showing you how you can actually record your own sounds and reverse them but basically this is just a clap that we've reversed and so if you layer that with a normal clap like this. You'll see it adds to the percussion and gives it a nice groove. But the main thing I want to be going on, touch on this project is how to chop up loops. So if you take a look here, I mean a lot of people are afraid of working with loops and they don't like, you know, I can understand why a lot of people, you know, they're worried that people are going to think they've taken someone else's work or stolen someone's work. But Chopping up loops is a technique, especially doing it this way in Ableton, that I've seen guys like Om Van Buren using, um, some of the techno guys like Umek. If you go look at Joris Brun, he's very, you know, um, fond of doing this kind of, this exact technique in Ableton. So if you go into, I think it's Future Music, you can go check out their tutorials and you'll see that they do this a lot as well. If you take a loop, this is one of the great things about Ableton Live and one of the reasons why I love working in Ableton for loops. And you'll see that guys like Armin will do this in live and then export it and bring it into Logic or whichever other door they use. This is a loop here, and you can hear the loop sounds, what it sounds like without any processing or without any chopping. If I can just go... So that's basically the loop. I've shortened it. I've only taken segments of it. It is actually a bit longer. 
this is what the original loop sounded like. And essentially what we've done with it is we've duplicated this loop. So let's see we've got one. We've planned one hard left and hard one hard right. And then what we've done is we've chopped out every second hit. So you'll see here I'm only using the second hit. And how you do that in Ableton is if you click here, you see the, down here where my mouse is, you've got the envelope button. If you use your envelope, here there's a whole bunch of parameters that you can automate within a clip. For example, volume, transposition, your gain, and grain flux modulation. There's so many different things that you can do here. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm just using the volume. I've also transposed it to get the, the percussion in key because I just it wasn't sitting so well in the mix. So you can see that I've taken everything down by three semitones. But the main thing here is the volume automation. And so what we've done is, you will see we've only taken every second hit. So basically we've taken this one, that one there, that one there. I've left those two out, and then the last three. And then in the one that we've duplicated, we've done the opposite, and we're now using the first. And then we've taken that one there, and that one there. So now when you play them together, you can hear what happens. Okay, so you can hear the the little pieces where I've chopped it, but obviously you can't really notice when it's in the, the complete mix, but you'll see it just gives you a really nice like swinging feel from left to right. That's just one example. I'm going to show you a few more. And so when you play that with your kick, where's my kick? You can really hear just how much more of a creative element it gives you on a standard loop. And I mean, that's one that we haven't even really chopped up or done much with. But it's just a, a good example of what you can do. Another thing I wanted to show you for my techniques is I like just my sound, my personal sound, the way I produce my music, is I like switching up my hats or shakers. So you'll see that here I've got a couple of shakers that I've done basically like I showed you guys last week using Impulse and removing all the low end etc. I'm not going to go back into the processing but I do like to quite often side chain my percussion or my hats and basically it just gives it a nice pumping feel but it obviously depends on the track so if you look here I've got a couple of hats and shakers there's the one side the next side you'll see I've got a loop here That I've also done quite a bit of processing on. And then I've got my normal open hat, which I don't know if I showed you this last week, but a, a common technique when you're processing your hats is using a delay and only delaying one side. So you'll see that the left side is basically nothing, it's as low as it can go. And then the right side, I've delayed it by 10 milliseconds. And what this has done, if you go to your hats, is I'll take it off. And listen how it sits center in the mix. And as soon as I add this delay, without panning it, I've got it to sit on the top of the mix and sit very wide in the mix. And this is a technique that's also often used with vocals. And this is just something you can use on any sound you want if you want to get it to sit in the mix a lot higher and a lot wider, but without actually physically panning it. So anyway, what I was showing you is, look how, if we take the drums, if you swap up your hi-hats, so there you'll hear the sound when it goes from one loop to the next, or from one... Now, depending on the type of music you're doing and the groove you have, this it just gives a nice element of change in the track. You'll hear it a lot easier when we do the second track now, which um, I'm going to go to, which is my bootleg of Above and Beyond. Then I'm going to show you how I use percussion as an instrument, um, tuning the percussion so that it's in the same key of the track, and then just various other ideas that you can do for hats and percussion. Okay, guys, this is my bootleg of Above and Beyond A Thing Called Love. Um, just so you guys know, you can actually download this bootleg from our Facebook page. 
so if you go check it out you can grab it and if you listen to the drums let me just show you what's happening here you'll hear how I've got a rolling percussion sound which I pitch up and down which I use for building tension in the track also in my build ups and just almost as an instrument here. let's see if I can show you So basically just to show you that part again, you can hear how the, the percussion is pitching up. Sorry, let me just change this BPM, I don't know how it got too high. And then something else you'll notice here, is like I said, once again, you'll see how I'm swapping up my loops and just switching them up. So you'll see I've got two loops again that I've chopped up and that I've panned, which you can hear over there. And I've used a lot of saturation and distortion on those just to give them that like crunchy feel. Then I've got this second loop here As you can also see it's got a lot of saturation on it and a side chain. And then we've got our normal hats and an open hat. And you can just hear once again how you bring that element of change. You know, switching up from various and so if you listen to that in the actual context of the track. Anyway, so let's get into the percussion and basically what we've done here is it follows a similar pattern to the bass line you know that rolling effect as you'll see it's I think the grid has been set here to 16th and you'll see we've changed the velocity a bit if you look down here just to give it a bit more of a swing and just to give it a bit more just a bit more character then basically there's two percussion hits that have been panned you can hear there's a lot of reverb and then you'll see here basically I've used the transposition to get this in key and then obviously I'm also using it to you'll see here with the automation where my mouse is um, I'm using it as the, the, the synth is kind of pitching up, as it's building tension in the track before the drop. The percussion does the same. But even before that, we already transpose the percussion to get it in key with the track. So you'll see how using a spectrum analyzer. You can kind of see there where it's hitting in D, or resonating in D rather. And so that's you know because it's you don't always have to do that but because it's such a dominant sound in the track and because like i said it's almost like another instrument we had to do that and then basically a bit of eqing some side chain compression which you can see is quite aggressive and then once again i've used automation here that i've used for the tr transposing the percussion up and down and this is what gives it that like rising feel so And that works with this synth down here. Let's see if I can find it. So you can hear they start pitching up together.
And yeah, that's just another way that you can use percussion. I mean, there's so many various ways. I mean, I can go on forever. Every track we do is different. So obviously arrangement will be different. But then I'll just show you once more now in the deep tech track, just once again, how you can get creative with cutting and reversing loops. And so you really just got to be creative, but don't be afraid to, you know, especially if you're hitting a wall creatively, to take loops and just start fiddling with them, putting various effects on them, chopping them up, reversing them even, I've done that a lot, and also using effects to get things to sit well in the mix. Once again, you can see it on my percussion, how you can clearly hear how much reverb I have sitting on this percussion. So yeah, let's go to the deep tech track and then I'll show you a last tip or two. Okay guys, this is my new deep tech release that's going to be releasing soon on Triple Fire Music called False Lie. It releases under my house alias, The Beat Prophet. Uh, let me just mute this crackle. It can be a bit irritating. And basically just once again, I want to show you, you know, how you can layer and chop and edit various loops to create a very unique groove or sound. So basically, let me just find the track. This is the track here. And just once again, a good place where you can hear the percussion. So basically if we draw, jump into the drums, We got standard kick and hats and snares and claps, which are processed in the same way as I do my most of my trance stuff. But here you can see basically we've got one, two, three loops. Then we've got some custom shakers, and then once again we've got another four, five. Okay, that's not being used. Five loops together, and if we can just show you all the various sounds that we have here. You got that one, which once again, you can see how we've automated to cut out any parts you don't like, like claps or just samples that weren't in key, or also, you know, you don't want too much. I only wanted that particular sound out of the loop. Another example be here. This is a great example. Look how much of this loop has been removed. And look how we've changed the envelopes to cut out all of the, kind of like the edges that we don't like. So if you listen to this. That loop never sounded like that originally. It's because of the way that we've chopped it up. And then sometimes what I'll do as well is you'll take individual hits, you'll cut them out, paste them back in, and then you can reverse them. And so you take that and you layer it with the other sounds that you've chosen. And really you can see the groove from the layer. So add that with the rest of your drums. You can see this loop here. We've basically cut out about 80% of the loop. We've only used two hits out of the entire loop. And then we've looped that around again. A specific part. And We've added all these individual hits together and we've created our own groove and, you know, I know it's, you know, sometimes, you know, when you really do get a nice groove going, you'll sit and arrange everything yourself. But just once again, I mean, I know a lot of people 
aren't fond of leaves, but you, you really, you can be quite creative with them. And it is actually, you know, quite common for people to take loops and cut them up. Um, that's one of the reasons why, well, one of the only reasons I, that I really used to like Reason was for the Rex player. Because I used to love how you could have all the individual hits set up in a Rex in MIDI. But yeah, guys, um, this video was a bit more basic than last week's one, as we didn't do processing. But I hope you got some ideas. In the next videos, we're going to start jumping into bass lines, leads, melodies. And so we'll probably do two parts on bass lines. They're going to be quite in-depth. So get ready for some really in-depth bass processing, bass patterns. And remember to send me your questions and your requests. You can send them to my Facebook profile, which is Stefan Fillion Music. To Twitter, Stefan underscore Fillion. Or mail me, info at stefanfillion.com. And let me know which questions you have and what you'd like me to show you. Thanks guys and thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you next week.